guys, Dr. Andy here. Today I want to talk about the three planes of core movement uh, that we need to be able to control and stabilize in order to have a really good, strong, stable core so that we are a lot less likely to hurt our back in the future. So, number one thing that I find with all of my back pain patients, most of them have some sort of a core stability problem, uh, meaning they are not able to control their movement through their thoracic and lumbar spine, so you know, from here to your, to your, to your waist, uh, that leads to a injury of some sort. It could be an injury in the gym from lifting, it could be from sitting too much at work and you stand up one time and you notice a, you know, a sharp pain in your low back. It could even be our pregnant, our pregnant ladies that develop some low back problems because they are not able to stabilize their core very well. Okay, so we're going to talk about the three different uh, movements uh, that are three different planes that we need to control for good core stability. Okay, so first let's look at um, in the front plane, so, excuse me, so uh, going forwards and backwards, okay? So if this right here, is our spine, and this is our sacrum basically down at our waist, all right? We need to be able to, you know, let's, let's draw a pretty head, okay? Eyes, mouth, little nose, uh, our beautiful human being right here, all right? So this is the front and that's the back. We need to be able to control um, what is called flexion and extension. And flexion and extension, bending forward is called flexion, and bending backwards is called extension. Okay, so we need to be able to control for this bending forward and bending backwards. If you're not able to control it, we are a lot more likely to, to end up in injury, okay? So whether we're doing any kind of squats or getting out of a chair, you could hurt yourself, okay? So flexion and extension, uh, the basic one, the number one the, uh, exercise that you can focus to control for this is a 60 second plank. So you could do a plank on your hands or on your elbows, get down, we have great videos on how to do those. Um, get down, do a 60 second plank. And if you can do it for 60 seconds, perfect. If you can't, break it up so that you can eventually get to 60. So if you can only do it for four, for 15 seconds, do you know four reps of that. If you can do it for 30 seconds, do a 30 second plank twice, and then work your way up to 60 seconds. And when you know you can do a perfect plank for 60 seconds, then you know you have really, really good core stability, or excuse me, flexion and extension core stability, all right? That's just one of three, however, so we need to focus on two more, uh, two more planes of movement for the core, and if we have really good stability there, we're, you know, again, um, we're meeting our goal of being a lot more injury resistant, okay? So next, let us focus on bending side to side. Okay, so that is called lateral flexion. Bending to your right would be right lateral flexion. Bending to your left would be left lateral flexion. So let's do a gorgeous human being again. Big smile. If this is the right and that's the left, lateral flexion, bending to the left, or excuse me, to the right, and then bending to the left. All right, that is lateral flexion, side bending, okay? Perfect uh, exercise for this is a side plank. I know it's literally just a variation of the plank that we did before, but a side plank is just lying on your side on one elbow, stack your feet. If you need to start off on your knees, that's perfectly fine. Again, we've got awesome videos on how to do a side plank as well, so look those up. You'll find them in our library category or catalog. Perfect example of how to do one really, really well. So I don't care what you do with the other arm. The other arm can go straight out. You can put it on your side. I don't care, but we're working for 30 seconds on each side, so 30, and 30, once again, if you can only do 15 seconds, do it twice on each side, so two reps of, of 15 on each side, work your way up to doing 30 seconds. And when you can do 30 second plank on both sides, I'm gonna be pretty happy and say that now you have lateral flexion, lateral bending side to side, that plane of movement nailed down perfect, and we're, we're two thirds the way there, okay? Last one, and this is the harder one, this is rotation, okay? So again, we'll draw our, our beautiful little human being, huge smile, give ourselves a little nose, all right? So rotation is simple, right? Twisting side to side. Okay, this one's a little bit harder. 
uh, we'll put together a video for you. It's called a, a anti-rotation hold, okay? So for this one, what you're gonna do is you're going to get like a band, like a red band, you know, you can buy one at Dick's Sporting Goods, you know, find one on Amazon, uh, and you tie that band to a post, you know, if you got a bed post or something nice and stable on one end, uh, about shoulder height, right? So you're gonna grab it about shoulder height, and then you're gonna step away from that off to the side, so the wall, you know, is coming from your right, you, you bring it to about your shoulder, and then you bring it out and pull, and you're going to hold it in front of you for 30 seconds, uh, breathing completely normal. For, for all of these, you know, for, for the plank and the side plank, everything that you're doing, you want to be able to breathe completely normal, because if you brace and you're holding your breath, it's almost like cheating. Yes, you will do a little bit better, but in real life, you're not walking around holding your breath. Um, so if you are breathing normally and you're able to do these perfectly, well then we know that you're operating, you know, at 100% outside of here. Uh, so again, an anti-rotation hold is a fantastic exercise to work on core stability. So if you can do a plank, a side plank, and an anti-rotation hold, so the plank for 60 seconds, a side plank, both sides for 30 seconds, and then anti-rotation holds both sides for 30 seconds, well then you've been able to control the three planes of movement. You have a very stable core, and you're gonna be a lot less likely to hurt yourself going, going forward, whether that's doing an overhead squat, you know, deadlifting, any kind of exercise in the gym, your particular sport, again, if you play golf, you wanna have a really stable core. You don't want your core to be moving around a lot. Most of your movement is coming from the hips and the upper back, not your mid, or excuse me, not your lower back where your core is, okay? So, those are the three exercises, those are the three planes of movement. If you have any questions, let me know. Always remember to live with passion, not pain.